One of the things we learned from the wedding party is this thing called the power of the, of the blockbuster. So it feels sometimes like it's higher risk, mm -hmm. but because the, ret the potential <coughs> for returns are higher, it's sometimes worth taking that risk. risk. So, you want to start this one or should we start? Because <laughs> it's just the fact that when you're in your 20s, you have too much time on your hands, and we decided that it would be a good <laughs> idea to make movies. Um, but we, we decided that by we had people come over to do like script reads, which were almost all bad. We probably have burnt all. Well, I think you've jumped a few steps. So, yes, he has. He has jumped quite I a did. number okay, of steps. So. Yes, because basically he came up to me one day and mentioned it, and I was like, I don't even watch Nollywood movies. Why would I want to produce movies? And but he made a compelling reason, and we've sat down and said, okay, fine, it's possible. You know when you. Again, you have time on your hands. This is over beer, by the way. So you're like, mm, no problem now. Let's see what happens. And then we, there were three of us, and when we discussed it, and then we started meeting up for drinks, which was an excuse to drink. Then we would then discuss. <laughs> to drink and eat suya. And drink and eat suya. Then we would then, ah, Equity Club was wonderful. <laughs> then <laughs> we would. <laughs> and then, yeah, thank you, Equity Club. Really? <laughs> we, we, we would attempt to write. <laughs> and then we would try to write stuff. And, uh, it was mostly bad, and then it became average, and then it became slightly in less better. average. And then we made our web series that made us realize that, yes, we were really average. Um, it's called Knock Knock. It's still on YouTube. I, Don't check it out. I please. always say check it out, but they're still embarrassed <laughs> by it. But you always remember your first time, so please watch it and let us know what you think. Well, not like the person that said that we hope the writer got shot. <laughs> we were the writers. We were the writers, so, so nobody shot us, thankfully. I mean, we're alive. Uh, and it started like four stars today, right now. So it was a web series mm -hmm. about. No, no, it starred four stars. Um, four really? people in. Yeah, so I mean. Oh, four stars. Yeah, right. four stars. So um, it was. Knock Knock was. OC, Demi Okolawa, Barry Marquizo, and Zena then Zena Balogo. And it was. Are you, please, are you checking? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was the before they were famous. Thing. And it was directed by Tolo Ajayi. Yes. Who yes. Um, basically has done a lot of cool things on Tenso. On Tenso. He, did a, he did a short film about the Biafra Award that won some awards. Um, yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's a where were they then type. Thing. We shot 13 episodes in five days. <sighs> yeah, but it was worth it was a I mean, it's all of five minutes yeah, each, yeah. so it wasn't like it was a long. But we shot 13 episodes in five <laughs> days. <laughs> so, so the formal training was the doing. So, which is why we are very big on on um, apprenticeships in in Nollywood. So, for us, we believe that the best way to learn is to do. So yes, you buy all the books, Rob McKee's stories, Save the Cats, all those many screenwriting books. But one of, yeah. the, one of the things that I remember is that the best way to, to learn how to write movies is to watch movies, read scripts, and write movies. So that's how you learn. You learn by the act of doing, doing, doing the craft. And we um, did read a lot of scripts. Oh. We still do. Yeah, we have a Dropbox and folder that has so, yeah. we have like, yeah. so it was almost like assignments. We used to give ourselves assignments. We yeah. would write. Yeah. And then, and I absolutely hated writing. I think I wrote the list and it shows. So it does not do things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to write, but now uh -huh. yeah, so she I she runs produce. production. Yeah. So she runs yeah. production. I basically just market. Yeah. So you don't just market, you so market fantastically. Yes. Thank you. So <laughs> basically what happened after we made the web series was I reached out to Uduak uh, yeah, Isong, Isong, yeah. of Closer Pictures. Then she was still at RAA mm -hmm. of Royal Arts with her sister MM. Um, and I said, we had an idea for a movie. We want to produce it. We don't know anything about production on the large scale. Five days doesn't cut it. And they were gracious enough to read the script and say, we really liked it. And we collaborated together on our first film. Yeah. It's called The Department. Thank the department. you, Uduak. Uduak, yeah. Yes. And um, <laughs> that started OC, K OC again. How, how, how can you start from OC when you have Majid, Desmond? How can okay, you start so from Majid when you have Osas? Yes, that's true. She <laughs> so basically, those were all people in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically, uh, it was, so I always took to Coco that like, it was her production. We, we were just learning out how yeah, to make films. Yeah, films. So... Basically, um, it was quite, we did short for about 20 days. Um, mm -hmm. It was our first production. It was over budget, as these things always are. Mm -hmm. It was over time, and it was a crash course in Nigerian production. So one of the things you get when you're shooting is called a Lagos State Permit. 
And so Norway <sighs> is supposed to cover you shooting in Lagos. Yes. And so at two in the morning, we went on the Lekki Ikoyi Bridge, which was a Lagos State Bridge. And so we assumed that we would be allowed to shoot. shoot. So we get on the bridge, because this was when the bridge had really much first been built. We mm -hmm. would just know that this was 2014. Yeah. So yeah. I think that maybe only one of the production had shot just driving through. We basically did an action scene on the bridge. Parts. Well, I'm using action scene very broadly. In that <laughs> someone, <laughs> some, agree someone ran on the bridge. Someone ran yes. on the bridge. So there was action. there was some action. So literally, so, we, so like you know when so when so if you've ever worked in production, when people come to set up, you know people have come. So ten cars pulled up, people spilled down. Da, 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 da. That's how two <laughs> Hiloxes just <laughs> so drove down. I said, "What are you people doing?" We're like, oh, we're shooting on the bridge. Like, what do you mean you're shooting on the, on the bridge? Long story short, we used Deadman and Majid to start wow them. So they literally allowed no, us to shoot. shoot. We shot from two, and, it, and it, we told them we'd be done by three. Of course, we're done at seven in the morning. So <laughs> literally, we so we got that in the scene. And, and yes, the film is a good first effort. Let me put it that way. So yeah, I think it comes down to goodwill, right? So it comes down to your character. So if you're a kind of person that you are that kind of person from start. People tend to believe in you, you. And then you also have that line of communication open where you're constantly explaining what you're doing. People can see your efforts. So we put out the movie. We let them know how the movie is doing. We carry people along. So we've got people that have invested in... People invested in our first web series. Yeah, yeah that, that too cost a lot of money. But people invested in our very first web series. And since that time, it's just been a constant effort. We are constantly showing them what you are doing. They are seeing people that you are working with. You know, so it starts to build some level of confidence over time. Yeah, so, so you have to put a structure around it. So one of, the, one of the things that we did was, because I had a finance background, I was able to yeah, design yeah. the investment product that yeah. they were able to look at it and decide on an investment level. Because what I always tell people is that film is not... Real estate. Uh, real estate. It's not <laughs> stocks. Yeah. It's long term. Don't invest <clears throat> in this because you want to make money like you're going to make 3x, 4x. And in other, 18 months. other people, stuff, we never promised that. We said it's that you that we it's preservation of capital, you make a little return, and you will create something worthwhile. So it always helps when people like the films you make. Yes. So when people came for the department premiere, they were like, oh, very, very well done. I mean, they didn't even take them five years to get their money back, but they were willing to support going forward. Going forward. Yes. And then I guess the other thing that helped us was, so we. So one of the things we tried to do was that we tried to basically build out a slate so people could invest across. So yep. most of the people who invested in Wedding Party in, also invested in the earlier ones. Well, so basically, by the, because you've invested in multiple, you've benefited from the really successful ones, and also so that helps you when some of the other ones are slower. It balances so, uh, mitigates yeah, your it risk. mitigates your risk. It mitigates your risk, basically. Yeah. And so because we were able to commit to producing on a regular basis, that enabled us to build out our investor community. Like, yeah, <laughs> if yeah, it's you, successful, you so keep the thing about a franchise is that you never walk away from a franchise, franchise. until the audience tells, tells you, you to go away. away. So you make it to the end. Everybody has finally admitted. I'm that. very surprised it's another Terminator because the first two were amazing. The third one was so so. The fourth and the fifth nobody mm -hmm. saw. Now and then they have the sixth six, one where listen. people are still so people are they're still like, like okay, yeah. they don't want they don't it want anymore. Maybe, uh, but as long as people want one franchise, you're gonna try and figure out a way to make it. And sometimes you can walk away. I mean. Um, hangover the third one was still successful but they said you know what the story's over and they walked away so like for now that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> who knows in five years so bad you know yeah. we can still make money yeah. off it yeah. so so what the only thing that i would say about wedding party 2 was that it's it's we probably should have done it in 2018 not 17 because it's hard to explain what it was like that christmas of 2016 when the entire country stopped to watch your film it's it's a it's a very it's it's humbling it's, it's, it's a, yeah like it and so we were also like we have to do it again because people kept asking mm -hmm. us when is part two coming out when is part two coming out and so we basically figured out this is the story we want to tell for part two but mm -hmm. i but i hazard that if we had basically then, waited because we shot part one so part two came out the sorry same. part one came out in december 2016. december 16 played till April, yeah. and at, that's when we had started planning to shoot two. two. So literally, and then two came out in December. December. So December the gap 10. between the two of them was not, and then was not that long. So we probably, in hindsight, should have pushed it one year out. Well, you live and you learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we don't regret that because it, I think two was also a big learning experience for us as well. Yeah. Because it, it it showed the, it did something that people don't realize. 
it created an international theatrical market for Nollywood because wow. it released in 22 countries yes. outside, of outside of Nigeria. Yeah. So it's actually still one of the most successful. Yeah, it, it, is. it is the most successful. Uh, more successful than one, actually. More yeah. successful than one. So it's the most successful Nollywood movie till date. Globally. Yeah. There's there is, it depends on it depends what because it depends on movie it depends on the scale it depends yeah. on what you are doing so i mean people make films for four million people make yeah three million for five million people make for 15 for 20 at least so my so our experience is that <coughs> the least viable number that i have heard of is two millionaire like i've heard and that is I don't know, maybe you own all your equipment. Yeah, you have to, so, so you're subsidizing something. Yeah, you're subsidizing. Everything. Two so million, you're probably you only paying your cast. You're yeah, only paying cast because <laughs> you own the equipment, you own the lights, you have mm -hmm. all of those things, all your technical bits are not covered. Your, your post is all yeah. stuff. So, yeah. so you can do it, but it's tough. The outer range is, you, you, mm -hmm. film is money. You can spend mm -hmm. as much, much as, as you want. want. But the average Nigerian film in general, maybe between 8 million and 25 is the average film. We tend to go higher than that because we think our films can make more in box office. Mm -hmm. We can broaden out. So the, the, one, of the, one of the things we learned from The Wedding Party is this thing called the power of the, of the blockbuster. So it feels sometimes like it's higher risk, mm -hmm. but because the, ret the potential <coughs> for returns are higher, it's sometimes worth taking that, that risk. risk yes. So we basically play <coughs> off that to decide that like, is there a project that you will spend a little bit more but the rewards are higher. higher because if you look at the over the big films in terms of the reception both in the cinema online etc they have to, they generally are bigger budget that does not mean that smaller budget films can go viral i mean look at elevator baby which is in cinemas mm -hmm. now it basically is doing very well it's going to end up probably one of the top 10 nigerian mm -hmm. films of the year it's a, almost a one location small it's drama. A one location shoot. we did arbitration it's our lowest budget film i think of how much it's our lowest budget film. <laughs> <laughs> so, Low budget movie. So, um, and it's one of our most successful. successful. It had, a, it went to Toronto Film Festival. It had a good run on Netflix, etc. So, you, so s smaller films can break out, but on average, it's tend the bigger films that tend to do well. The challenge between the two, mm -hmm. it's the funding really, um, and the uh, the reception. So, we're still struggling really uh, with our cinema culture in mm. Nigeria. But you know, it would grow. We have hope, we're optimistic. Um, but yes, there's a, so there's something that Naz wrote um, about production value okay. and how if a film is normally a hundred minutes, American films are made for about a hundred million dollars. Nigerian films, <laughs> okay, let's even say that we make it for a hundred million naira. It means that for American films, a million naira is spent per minute. A million dollars, million dollars is, is spent, spent per minute, minute of so shooting if you, it. if you look at like your Marvel movies, for example, yeah. so that's about a million dollars per minute. So multiply by, by the number of minutes, that's like 120 minutes, 120 million average. Yeah, so compare that to Nigerian Nigeria. films. If we shoot for one million naira or two million naira per film, divide that by 100 minutes. And then you compare. So obviously, <laughs> the, the more you capital you have, the better your, your film is. Going to be. And yeah. the more, the more you are able to make a living. I, I mean, will tell you it, for a fact that the standards have risen because yeah. there's something called quality control. The, you need to pass QC test. QC test. And for you to get on Amazon, Netflix, all of them, they have their requirements. So let me tell you our journey. <laughs> when, so we had so there there have been two batches of Netflix. Yes. The first batch was, was the 2016, 2017. 17. So when we did the City to City Festival Spotlight in Toronto, and that in, Netflix was that was one of the things. That, so Netflix had had a few films here and there, mostly done in partnership. Which is I think October one was there, Knocking on Heaven's Door, that. But those were partnerships that were done offshore, pretty much. So they decided to start buying Hollywood content in a big content. way in 2016, <clears> and. That QC process was so. <laughs> let's just say that forty percent of the of the of the license fee we got for out of luck went, went to into the, 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 the issues with the QC. But our second batch of, of stuff, which is the ones that just came on, we had barely like we had like maybe five fixes. Yes, so, so we have all gotten better at that. Um, at the QC part so because it's literally just technical standards and one of the things yeah. that has happened as the industry has grown is that we're better able to meet those standards. That standards. Yeah.
Okay. okay. So the way it works, the way it works from, for example, is that you release your movie, it goes to mo it goes to cinema. It spends like about four to six weeks. If you are lucky, maybe eight weeks in the cinema. If you are lucky. Or if you are king of Bowl, If you are king of Bowl, you have <laughs> 20 weeks in the cinema, yeah. right? So that, that way, you get some of your money back. Mm -hmm. Now, these streaming platforms help to extend that so that you then have more streams of income after your movie has left cinema. Yeah. So if there are more streaming platforms coming up and willing to take on Nigerian content, it helps as a whole because now you can now make more money off your movie. Yep. Right? So you're not just solely dependent on the local cinema or then have to now say, oh, let me now switch and try and do like DVDs or video CDs because we don't do that for our movies. Yeah, because... Netflix, right? Yes. yes. So for Netflix, how does it work? Is it that they pay you Okay. So there's so it's a licensing no, no, it's a license. two types. There's the originals, which is what um, <coughs> um, Genevieve did, where they acquired the film, film. 100%, so. and then the other version is licensing, yeah. where they pay us for the films to license for a set time. For a set time. So, so basically, we still have the IP rights still own it. Yeah. to yeah. the films yeah. we have on our, on Netflix. Yeah. But for someone like Genevieve, I don't know what the deal is, you know, In completely, but, but they usually will when definitely like have bought some of those rights, yes. Yes. if not everything. Yeah. So no. Netflix takes a view based on the their view of the film. The film. So they assess the movie and then they decide. So yeah. then they even all our films were bought for the yeah, same amount. Yeah, very I mean, yeah. we've had like eight movies on the on there and not yeah. on, actually not to have the same price. Not to have the same price. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. one yeah. of those things. What? No. So yeah. So so the range. So it literally there's a range. It's a, it's a range. There's right? a range. So the range, the range is varied. Yes. It's, it's a wide range. So so the, so the point is so one of the, and it depends on the license. Quote. So yes. like for example, our wedding party one license was a five year license. Yes. But our department license, license two, year. two year license. Yes. I think we had yeah. So most of them are two years. Most of them are two years. But then years. they do some. They do three. They, they do five four. years. So like they, some they, are exclusive. They some are non exclusive. Yeah. 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 So, so it's so. So it depends. The fee is a function of the license. Are we mm -hmm. talking about like 300, 200, uh, dollars? If it, if it were, Zulu, we went diamonds. <laughs> so what do you mean? I'm wearing diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this, this is, so, so this is our view of the Netflix thing. Right? Yes. Globally, over time, the It'll numbers will go, go up. Just looking at what happens with the global numbers. But nobody is paying us those big global numbers. Their argument at the time is that the Nigerian subscriber base is low. It's too small. Our argument back to them is that Nollywood is a global um, industry. Your subscribers globally watch it so don't look at us in the nigerian bucket so, that, so that's still good i mean yeah, they, make that, they make that conversation continue to will continue to happen because they make that arguments because yes. yeah. but the solution is please one million subscribers to netflix in nigeria will help <laughs> so if you increase if we increase our nigerian subscriber base yeah. essentially it will help with the numbers that they pay out in general so um the largest subscriber base in africa is south africa okay. right yeah. now so when you look at it a south african movie will probably be worth more to them than a nigerian movie partly because they of their there are more people to watch it. No realizing that our Nigerian movies basically travel, so you've yes. got people in the US, the UK, all yeah. over the world watching it. So yeah. there is that yeah. and dynamic. That was one of the reasons why you see a lot of the producers basically advertising the, the their films on Netflix, not just from. It was also partly because you wanted people to sign up, subscribe. subscribe. I mean, one of the things that they did as well was that they they also cut trailers yeah. for the films, also advertising them. So we believe that people are watching and judge i mean you follow social media when films dropped people were watching. watching i mean one of the things that actually surprised us was people will sit down and watch three in a row yep. yeah like we should do we, we released three on friday by friday the evening, evening people were like, like i've oh, seen, I've seen, I've seen, seen this i've seen that I've seen new money and like, then wow, okay. give you your feedback yeah. and all so yeah. and so it's an and so it's <clears> interesting <throat> that it's providing more and more people willingness to watch it and i think that all of these things for us is the point we need more people watching our stuff because not just us everybody there's a lot of good stuff out there and so i think that as the industry grows the acceptance of nollywood as a fabric of the culture and the community continues to grow i mean it's, it's the dominant it's the dominant form of entertainment in africa to be honest and in I think, africa and i yeah. think that globally that recognition <coughs> is starting to come out and people are but the more important thing is that the creators benefit from it because i'm sure that I mean, a good example is the Akia Popo going viral. I mean, how um, much do you think they made from that? <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's like global, mm -hmm. not like it's an actual global phenomenon, right? Yeah. Nobody, there's no, I haven't heard of like somebody in America calling them to give them a commercial or this mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. because we don't generally control the value we create. So I think that one of the things that hopefully will happen over the next five to 10 years is you would hear of, t of global creators coming out of Nigeria and owning and getting paid for the, for the content they've created.